were born on the same day, January 23rd, 1930, to Alex Walcott and her husband Warwick Walcott. Teacher Alex, as she was affectionately known, was the principal of the Castro's Methodist Infant School, and like most principals, was firm but loving. Although their father passed away when they were very young, Derek, Roderick, and their elder sister Pamela were raised in a home of a passionate love and appreciation for literature, art, and music. The Walcott children started their education at the Methodist Infant School, where their mother was the principal. Derek and Roddy then went on to St. Mary's College, where Derek met Dunstan Sentoma. The two young men learned to paint and see under the tutelage, influence, and inspiration of painter, historian, and folklorist Harold Simmons. Derek published his first collection, 25 poems at 18, with $200 he borrowed from his mother, teacher Alex. He sold the books to his friends and eventually made the money back, and followed up with his second collection, Epitaph for the Young, in 1949, the beginnings of a long list of master collections of poetry and world-renowned plays. Derek Walker is actually one of the first um, published St. Lucian writers. He was one of the early ones, you know, I mean, like, I mean, Garth Sintoma would have been another one and so on, but he was certainly in the, in the vanguard of, of that tradition of self-publishing um, authors in St. Lucia. You recall that he had his first um, collection, 25 poems, and when he was a mere boy, and that would have been like in the 19, about 1948 or something like that. Um, so, I mean, basically what it really means is that there was this document, this book, and uh, these books when he started publishing more that St. Lucian writers could actually read. I mean, for me personally, that was one of the first pieces of St. Lucian literature that I was exposed to because my father was reading Walcott. I became very much influenced by, you know, his, 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 his use of imagery, you know, the clarity of his writing, his focus on, on the St. Lucian landscape, etc., etc. And I'm sure that is the same that happened for many other, uh, other writers. Derek eventually won a scholarship to the University of the West Indies in Jamaica and left St. Lucia for Jamaica in September of 1950. By then he had established himself as a formidable young poet and he and his brother Roddy, along with Morris Mason and other young visionaries, had formed the St. Lucia Arts Guild. The Guild paved the way for the development of St. Lucia's literary works and drama and produced St. Lucian artists of Caribbean and international stature. Roderick Walcott is best remembered as the leader of the Arts Guild, taking the helm after Derek left for university in 1950. From 1951 to 1967, the Guild staged a number of plays by international writers, including Chekhov, Shakespeare and Marlowe, as well as plays written by both Roddy and Derek and other St. Lucian writers. Roddy had decided that they would have, um, uh, we would have festivals the St. Lucia Arts Guild, instead of doing one, two productions here and there during the year, we have a week of drama. Drama, um, performing arts, other performing arts, dance, literature, and, um, uh, and whatever, yeah, literature also. And um, uh, so, music, the police band would be involved the police band also. Roddy's collaboration with Charles Cadet produced many folk songs that have now become classic St. Lucian songs. His now famous musical, The Banjo Man, was staged by St. Lucia for the first Carafesta in Guyana in 1972. When it was decided to put on this Carifesta thing, the Carifesta program came about. The first one in Guyana, Roddy was invited out and he produced this himself, produced that, uh, the Banjo Man himself, directed it. And is then um, uh, uh, with Clement Spring and so on, we, bam, Charles, uh, the music was properly arranged and Roddy introduced a prologue, prologue uh, to the Banjo Man, which, and that play went over very, very well, both here and it's traveled. Uh, traveled to Guyana, of course, traveled uh, to, to, I think it was Curacao, yes, not Curacao, but around the Virgin Islands. And um, uh, it was done in England uh, a number of years ago. Uh, all reasonably successfully done. Uh, so that was my first association with Roddy. And um, then he decided that he wanted me to, I suppose he was happy with what I uh, produced with him composed for him and um, 
he decided, he, he called me and said he was doing Chanson Marianne, which is a companion piece, the sort of La Ro the Margaret companion piece to flower, in flower festivals. And um, of course I wrote the music with him for the Mar Chanson Marianne. And uh, went on to write a, a music for the Van Man. Not the Van Man, I've just mentioned the Van Man, but um, uh, the legend of Tom Fool and um, uh, The Wonderful World of Brother Rabbit, five musicals. Banjo Man was part of a trilogy that included Chanson Marianne, 1974, and Romeo et Violet, 1979. These plays featured the local flower festivals of St. Lucia, La Rose, and La Marguerite. Roddy garnered acclaim throughout the region as a playwright, screenwriter, painter, theater director, costume and set designer, song lyricist, and literary editor. He is regarded as one of the founders of modern Caribbean theater, teaching young thespians, directing, and writing plays. Roddy is very unobtrusive in, 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 in how, as far as I could tell, from very unobtrusive in, in how he, he did the directing. He wasn't one of those very, very sort of strident military kind, of, military kind of directors. He had really, really subtle ways of getting the actors to do what he wanted. He did a lot of incidental teaching. He really approached directing like a teaching, I mean like a teaching assignment, you know, like, like, a, like a real teacher. Just very, very incidentally, just dropping in little comments here and there. He was talking a lot of what I understood as theory, as drama theory. He was explaining the reasons why he was doing what he was doing. I knew he knew most persons weren't really interested in that, but he said it anyway, and he dropped it anyway, and where the seed fall, it fall. And I picked up a whole lot there from him that I think really, I think up to now, has influenced my, my approach to, to directing. Roddy also played an active role in the development of carnival and steel pan music in St. Lucia. He led Turk's carnival band for many years, designing and making costumes and pioneering the development of the steel band. He was awarded the Officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1976, the Joseph DeVoe Lifetime Achievement Award at the MNC Fine Arts Awards 2000, and St. Lucia's Medal of Honor Gold for Outstanding Contribution to Literary and Performing Arts in 2000. After his studies, Derek had moved to Trinidad, where he co-founded the Little Caribbean Theatre Workshop, which eventually morphed into the Trinidad Theatre Workshop. Like the Arts Guild, the Trinidad Theatre Workshop set a solid foundation for the development of theatre arts in the Caribbean, turning out some of the Caribbean's finest actors and theatre productions. In the 60s and 70s, Derek published much of the poetry which would begin to cement his international reputation as one of the greatest poets of his time. These years were also spent writing, directing, and producing a series of plays for the Trinidad Theatre Workshop and the St. Lucia Arts Guild, which captured the true essence of the islands, turning the everyday man into folk heroes, and which would eventually become Caribbean classics. These guys actually went into the country and placed the country on the stage because their heroes were not, both brothers, their heroes were not the grand um, knights and um, noblemen as in Shakespeare and in some of the great dramatists, but they were the salt of the earth, the ordinary people, you know, and you cannot help but identify with that kind of work because you know the heroes are almost the antithesis of a hero, you know. Derek received numerous awards over the years, but the pinnacle of achievement came in 1992 with the announcement of the Nobel Prize for Literature, the first writer from the English-speaking Caribbean to receive the honor. The legacy of the Walcott brothers manifests itself most in the inspiration and influence it has on St. Lucian artists and the wider Caribbean region. Both Roddy and Derek, of course, within the art skill, did a lot in, for the development of theater in these very early days, you know, and the, uh, you, you know, with, with very little resources. In these days, there were no resources. It, you know, it depended on your own resources. But they were committed people, committed actors, people who loved the theater and did things because they loved the theater. Nobody got paid. You know, it doesn't matter how much money I can get, which is today, you know. Um, and it was that love of theater, you know, that, uh, that, 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 that really created uh, the the uh, success with it was limited success because it was done only in St. Lucia, but the success of, 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 of these early early efforts, you know. The influence is wider than I think we, we might have realized. Certainly in the in the fifties and early sixties when the when the when the guild was of a force not only in St. Lucia, um, but outside of St. Lucia, 
um, the, the, the kind of experimentation that, that was happening here in St. Lucia with a, with a, a drama that was, that was both drawing on the folk elements and so on in the culture, but also was aiming for a kind of poeticism, if you like. I think St. Lucia was very, very peculiar in that. That was very much Derek's influence. Um, but it came through the Arts Guild because, um, you know, Derek would send his plays down and so on to do. Roderick's, Roderick's um, played The Harrowing of Benji. I think it still has the distinction, um, until research proves otherwise, it still has the distinction of being the most performed play in the Anglophone Caribbean. Because once it was done here and then word got out, everybody wanted the script. It was done in Jamaica, I, forget, I don't know how many times, you know, and so, um, done in, in other islands, Grenada and Trinidad and so on. Um, and he, he'd taken plays from here to Dominica. Dominican um, performers came over here to perform. There was more interaction and therefore, you know, more, more, more cross-fertilization. So the particular trend of theatre that, that, that he was, well, this is just, just, I mean, he was experimenting with a number of things, but, but the, what people sometimes refer to as total theatre, that, that whole amalgam of, of music and movement, and, you know. Um, he was a real, and still is, a real pioneer in that. I think he's been a tremendous influence both in that kind of way and in the fact that the tradition that he created here with the, with the generation before mine, like my, yeah, my brother Hogarth and Arthur Jacobs, and so on, they laid a foundation for a number of us, you know, myself and others, coming into theater, we had, we had a standard that we had to meet. It took me a while to understand how much of a pioneer that, that, that he was, really and truly, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, I miss him. <laughs> Certainly, as a poet, I think Derek, Derek Walker still is my main influence as a poet. I read international poets, I've met international poets, but after all is said and done, Derek Walker is still my poetry master. I learned how to write from him. The Walker brothers and their generation, Charles Cadet, Denson Santoma, call the names. They were a tremendous forming influence on us, whatever we are today. If you check the roots of what we're doing in our work, you will find the Walcotts, the Generation, Centome, Cade, and all the others. And of course, beyond just St. Lucia, Caribbean. People talk sometimes about the post walker generation. I don't use that phrase. Derek is still with us. He's still writing poetry, which is far ahead of what many of us are doing. There are real talents around in the Caribbean, in St. Lucia. But Derek Walker is still ahead of all of us, man, to what he's achieved, what he's doing. So as influence, oh yes, absolutely. The Walcott brothers and their generation, for me as a St. Lucian, also as a Caribbean person, very real, very formative, very substantial, and still very much there. The mere stature of Walcott is in inspiration in itself. Mm -hmm. But his writing is in another class. And to people like me, the generation immediately after, he was a kind of yardstick that you use to measure your work. But that yardstick was always longer than a yard. I have seen um, a lot of work where you may not notice his hand in it, but the mere fact that a guy would choose a line in Creole to describe something, it is the kind of St. Lucianness that I speak about in Walker's poetry. You know, when he, like, like, like when he talks of Cessen, of a vo with a voice like country smoke, you know, uh, you know of garden smoke, you know, and this kind, this kind you, you, you actually smell the thing. and. You feel the timber of the voice coming in and out, out, out of it. Even his tribute to Sen Sen is, is, is only a Saint Lucian could have written that. Yeah. We breathed <laughs> art, you know. And oh, Roddy was good. Roddy was good. Himself and Derek, I tell you, teacher Adric Alex was a boon to this country by having these twins. Derek and Roddy's contribution to the arts in St. Lucia was an artistic revolution, which eventually formed the foundations for the evolution of the creative and literary arts in the Caribbean. Through their art, they have gifted us with vision, one which has enabled us to love and appreciate the beauty which they always found in the simplest aspects of Caribbean life. In Derek's own words, the only possible realization in these West Indies is art.